Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Amen. Isn't he marvelous? No other name but the name of Jesus brings joy, peace, salvation, and deliverance. Amen. Beloved, may the Lord continue to bless each and every one of you. We're so grateful not only for those who are watching through Facebook Live, but all those who are here. Today, we thank you for your continued commitment to the Lord, first of all, and to Catalyst International Church. Amen. Uh, we may be in transition, but we're moving forward by faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, uh, we rest in the promises of God and trust what he has in store for us. Uh, just a few uh, points of order. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, Pastor Ron Johnson uh, told us to make available some index cards for those who had questions concerning the transition process. And uh, we received several questions. We also received suggestions and we received comments. And the transition committee met uh, two weeks ago to discuss these questions, comments, and suggestions with Pastor Ron Johnson. Uh, we have made them available. They are available in uh, the foyer at the table. Uh, the questions that were asked that we're able to um, speak about publicly, we have placed them on this sheet. It's going to be titled, Answers of the Catalyst International Church Pastoral Transition Committee to Questions Posed by Members of the Church. You'll also have a list of the transition committee members, know who they are, and there will be some questions there that we have answered. And any suggestions and comments we're not going to respond to publicly, but we ha will take them into consideration and already have done so. Uh, so if anyone wants to submit an additional question or suggestion or comment, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. You can uh, fill out an index card provided uh, by Sister Donna or Brother Lanre. Uh, for those of you who are more techy, you can also email. You can also email at catalystchurchorlando at gmail.com, and the transition committee will take your questions or suggestions or comments under consideration. Amen. I also want to uh, let the, the ladies of the church know that we are working on the ladies' bathroom. Amen. It is a project in development. We have a company. Uh, that is going to take care of that, so please be patient. We apologize uh, if there's any, been any log jams due to the situation, but it's being handled, and in Jesus' name, sooner rather than later, it'll get done. Amen? And we also want to announce that next week is Mother's Day. All right. And G to G, G to G has, is preparing a wonderful program, so don't miss out. Amen? And uh, all the men in here and the children, you know, get your wallets and your finances in order if you haven't done so already. You know, uh, if you don't want to go out to the stores in person because there's a lot of traffic, then, you know, jcp.com or Amazon or eBay or any of those other websites you can go to to get our precious mothers a gift of their deserving. Amen. We want to honor them. Amen. And... Uh, That'll be next week. Amen. And so, beloved, uh, we want to turn our attention to the Word of God. To the Word of God. And I'm going to finish a thought that we began a couple weeks ago on birthing God's purposes. Amen. There's so much information that we find when we study what the process of pregnancy is that uh, it can be spoken about at length, and actually I'm not technically qualified to speak about a process I'll never experience, uh, because I'm not equipped to do so. But the information that you find on WebMD and that you find on the internet and consulting so many medical websites and whatnot, it's so rich and it's full of so much information that you can basically have months of teaching because there's a biblical application to every stage of it. So we're going to try to finish everything up today because, um, as I said, uh, next week we'll have a, a special program and there's other voices that God is going to use to speak to the house. But I want to quickly recap uh, what we spoke about 
uh, the previous Sunday that we were speaking that birthing God's purposes requires conception. And that conception requires intimacy. Intimacy requires surrender, and surrender requires trust. And in order for us to manifest God's purposes, we have to be intentional. It's not about accidental. It's about being intentional. Uh, Mary did not know that she was part of God's plan, but once the angel gave her the message, she did not say, I'll tiptoe out of here, choose another. She accepted God's plan. She, she accepted God's purpose even though it was going to cause a shaking in her life and that of Joseph and that of those around her. And so as we continue the thought today, I want to cite Dr. D. James Kennedy. He's no longer with us. He's been with the Lord for several years now. But he used to be the pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale. Tremendous, gifted man of God who once stated, what really matters is what happens in us, not to us. What really matters is what happens in us, not to us. And personally, I believe that that's what Mary might have been thinking as she progressed from the first trimester to the third trimester of her pregnancy. As the Lord Jesus grew and developed inside her womb. And I believe that just as Mary, each and every one of us should be wanting to be filled with God's word. Amen. And have that word grow in us and develop in us and manifest God's purposes through us. Now, as all women do that go through this process, Mary went through all the uncomfortable symptoms as she experienced pregnancy. And the ladies here can attest to that. The swollen ankles, the nausea, the stretching, and the discomfort that goes with another life growing on the inside of you. All these uncomfortable symptoms and many more, she experienced it, but it was worthwhile because God's purpose was being birthed through her. And we have to know as a church and as believers, that when God fills us with his purpose, we will go through uncomfortable phases. We will go through challenging circumstances along the way. And there may be some experiences that do not feel too good because of the purpose of God being developed on the inside of us. And we have to be willing to go through those moments. We have to be willing to go through those circumstances because it's part of the process. But once we get to the end of that process, we will say it was worthwhile. Yes. Thank you for the pain and thank you for the discomfort and thank you for all the complications because now I can touch and see this purpose that God had for me. But there are certain complications that can arise, and the amount of ones that Wikipedia, anybody know that? Or WebMD or other websites provide as far as the complications that can arise during pre pregnancy, there's a long list. Some of the sisters in here may have faced issues when they were pregnant. But some of the complications that we want to touch on today that can arise during this process the first one we want to mention is the complications of pre-existing conditions. If there's any pre-existing condition in the female, once she becomes pregnant, those pre-existing conditions can affect the process of pregnancy and can potentially, in extreme cases, be fatal. For example, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, amongst other circumstances that can be present in the health of a female, can affect the process of pregnancy. And so, even though we can't control everything, but it is advisable, and this is said by experienced doctors, that it is advisable for women to be sure that their health is in the right place. 
if they want to conceive and bear children. And actually, that's a message to us, beloved. We need to analyze ourselves as far as our spiritual health is concerned. We need to make sure that if we want to birth God's purposes, we need to have spiritual health. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, the Apostle Paul has a very interesting message that he gives the Corinthian church. He says, therefore, since we have these promises, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Somebody please repeat with me, body and spirit. Leave that verse up there, Jamie. The reason is it's important for us to understand and grasp what the Apostle Paul is saying concerning body and spirit is because he is speaking about seen things and unseen things. Amen. Amen. And it's easy for us to deal with the seen things, the things that you can observe with your natural eye, or the things that you can perceive through experience. But there are unseen things that sometimes are not visible to the eye. And they are things that are past our perception. And even if we have discernment of the Spirit, as discerning as we may be, there still may be things that go past our radar. In fact, there's things in us sometimes that we are not even aware that are present until the Lord causes them to come out. I never forget an experiment that we did in science class one day when the teacher told us to take a, a piece of paper and just tear it up into small little pieces and put all those pieces at the bottom of the cup. And it was a narrow cup and the teacher said, try to put your hand in there and take those pieces out. If you have a hand like Brother Aviles, <laughs> my dad was gracious enough to, you know, transfer his hands to mine. I tried to put my hand in the cup, and I could not do it. So the teacher said, okay, now we're going to take water, and we're going to pour it in the cup, give it a couple of seconds, and everything at the bottom is going to come out. There are things in our lives sometimes that we are not even aware are present. We need to search ourselves, beloved. There may be grudges that you forgot about. There may be resentment, things that you have not been willing to forgive. You, we sweep it under the carpet and we go on in life and we forget that there's something on the inside that needs to be dealt with. And because the Lord loves us, he takes water, the Spirit of God, Amen. the Word of God, Amen. and He pours it into our hearts, and all the stuff at the bottom starts coming out. Amen. And He shows us that there are areas of our lives that need to be dealt with because even though they're not seen or they're not being able to be touched, they're still there. Amen. That's why Paul says, we need to purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Not just our physical body. Our spiritual health needs to be discerned, needs to be analyzed. We need to go to the Holy Spirit's medical office and say, please put me through that CAT scan. Put me through the MRI. The David the psalmist in Psalms 139 says, examine me, O Lord. See if there's any perversity in me. Guide me through the righteous path. And so the Apostle Paul says, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. If that word perfecting scares you, I just want to go ahead and make life a little bit easier for you. The word perfect in the Greek means complete. On this side of the world, Perfect for us means something that is unblemished, something that has no, uh, no mark, something in absolute pristine excellence. But in the Greek, it means complete. 
And Paul told us that we are complete in him. So without Jesus, we cannot be complete. But it says completing holiness out of reverence for God, which means that it should be a desire in us, beloved, for us to progress in stages of purity. We won't get all everything at once, but as we yield to God day by day, stage by stage, we will allow the Holy Spirit to work on us so those things that are hindering God's purpose in our lives be taken out of the way through the power of the Holy Spirit, our surrender to the Holy Spirit, and we can birth God's purposes. So we need to be sure that we are spiritually healthy. And so many people, as we've said in the past, always concentrate on money and sex. What about envy? What about jealousy? What about pride? What about resentment? What about prejudice? What about our emotions leading us contrary to God's will and plan for our lives? We must allow the Holy Spirit to work on us and get us prepared to conceive God's mind in our spiritual womb. The second thing that can happen is called ectopic pregnancy. This occurs when the fetus attempts to grow outside the female uterus. In many cases, it starts to try to develop itself in the fallopian tube. So when it grows out of place, it can potentially be fatal, and doctors have to intervene to end that pregnancy because it can cost the life of the mother. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, Brother Jimmy. We need to grow in the right place. It's not just being filled with his purpose. We have to be healthy, and we need to be sure we are in the right place. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. 1 Samuel, Brother Jimmy. 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. Hallelujah. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Samuel was having an all-night prayer vigil. Anybody remember those? <laughs> He's having an all-night prayer vigil, mourning over what could have been. Mourning over failure of meeting expectations. Mourning over a man that could have been established, could have been faithful. Could have been extended. Unfortunately, it did not happen. And so while Samuel is stuck in the past, God, this is just uh, Avila's commentary. God is in the future while Samuel is stuck in the past. One of the translations says that God said, Samuel, come to Jesse's house. Now, come means you're over there, and I'm over here, you're out of place, paraphrasing. You're stuck in the past, crying over what could have been, and I already am in the next phase. Forget Saul, I already have his replacement. I have the next phase for the nation. 21st century lingo, get with the program. Tell somebody, say get with the program. Samuel needed to go from his house to Jesse's house. He was in the wrong place. When he would move to the right place, he would see the purpose of God before his own eyes. 
That's why Jeremiah in chapter 18, I didn't give you this, Jimmy, but that's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 18, remember when the Lord said to Jeremiah, go to the potter's house, and there you will hear my words. Jeremiah could not stay in the comfort of his personal location. What God wanted to show him and reveal to him was in the potter's house. See, beloved, sometimes we're so comfortable, we don't want to move. And comfort brings us false sense of security. We want to be so secure that we become stagnant. But if Samuel wanted to understand the next phase, and if Jeremiah wanted to hear God's revelation, they had to move from where they were to where God was. So we need to grow in the right place. And sometimes that might mean moving right along. Shake the cobwebs. Take the duster. Dust yourself off. Put your shoes on. Tie your laces. And start moving in the direction where God will show you the next chapter. Premature birth. Any sister in here went through that experience? Sister Janet and Sister Nikki, they know better than most of us what that entails, how dangerous it is, and how complicated it can be. This occurs when the child is born before the appointed time. In some cases, it is not fully developed. It is supposed to be three trimesters. Nine months. But if it's beforehand, there are some cases where the second trimester has not even passed yet. And some babies, due to complications, are born. But in the spiritual realm, we need to be patient. And wait for the allotted time. Now, beloved, patience, I I know that our, our, our famous saying is that patience is a virtue. It is. But I just don't like the formula on how we get it. Because the Bible says it's the testing of our faith that produces patience. I don't like my faith being tested. I'm just being honest. Anybody can second this motion with me? I don't like my faith being tested if I'm transparent before you. But the Bible says it is necessary for our faith to be tested because it is what it produces, patience. And if we're going to birth God's purposes, we need to be patient and we need to operate within God's watch. Not our time. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11 through 12. The reason that God could not deal with Saul is because Saul was impatient. And we are a microwave generation. We're Google. We're eBay. We're Amazon. Right? Everything at the touch of our fingers. In fact, if if some of us aren't in here, you go to a fast food, you wait more than 30 seconds. You see some people like, you know, they lose their cool. Because we're used to things... And that's the way we want God to operate. I don't want to ruffle any any feathers, but we must be really careful with this decreeing and declaring thing. I need to be very careful with this because I do believe that there is authority in the words that we speak. Life and death, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And we have been given authority in Jesus' name. But... There is a humility that is required when we go before the presence of the sovereign creator of the universe. Because he's our father, but he's our king. And we don't come in with a list of demands telling him what to do. We come humbly asking that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. (laughs) 
I believe in speaking in faith. I believe that we should exercise the authority that God has given us. But it is very, very dangerous, beloved, when, when you see some people, the way that they talk to God, I'm like, do you remember who you're talking to? Yes, he's my friend. Yes, he's my father. But he's also my Lord. What if he wants something that I have not considered before? What if he has a distinct path that I had not even pondered in my mind? So here comes Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11 through 12. And Samuel had told him, son, hold your horses. Hold yourself together. Wait till I return, and then we together will sacrifice. See, because Samuel was a judge and a prophet. And Saul was king, but he did not have jurisdiction over the spiritual matters of the nation. So Samuel was telling Saul in a, in a modern context, you know, you do what you do. Go out there and fight. Lead the armies. Take care of the enemies of the people of God. And when I come back, then we will take care of the spiritual aspect. We'll sacrifice. And what does Saul do? He says, what have you done, asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal. And I have not sought the Lord's favor, so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. Tell somebody to say, be careful what you feel. The heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. Let's not confuse our feelings with the Holy Spirit. I can feel strongly, and I confess I felt strongly about many a thing in my short lifespan. And I've been wrong many a time. Because we can be wrong. I know that might be a newsflash to somebody. We can be wrong. Not because we have the Holy Spirit. It's not a guarantee that we cannot be wrong. The Holy Spirit will always be right. But Joel of Eles can be wrong. The Holy Spirit is always right. The Word is always right. But catalysts could be wrong. Denominations can be wrong. Famous preachers could be wrong. So we cannot put our trust in anything else but the Word of God and the Spirit of God. That's the only way that we can have sureness in our lives. So Saul felt compelled and he rushed and he sacrificed. Samuel told him, what have you done? This is not your jurisdiction. This is not your authority. Amen. You crossed the line. Yes. You're out of your lane. You should have waited. Beloved, if we want God's purposes to be birthed in us, we need to be patient. Yes. yes, sometimes when we can't see our way clearly, we get a little rattled, but we need to wait on the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen? And speaking of staying in your lane, one of the other things that can happen is breach baby. This occurs when the child is in the wrong position. It wants to be born, but instead of coming out head first, as it should be, they want to come out feet first. <laughs> Sister Jana went through that. Some of the sisters here. So, you see, the child is ready to come, but it's in the wrong position. We need to get in the right position. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 18 through 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
they confronted King Uzziah and said, it is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful. You will not be honored by the Lord God. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. Leave that up there, Jimmy. Now see, King Uzziah had the right to reign because he had lineage. He was of royal blood. He was of royal family. And he had the legal authority to be king. And he was a man who feared God. He's on that short list of righteous kings that sat on the throne of Judah. But see, sometimes we get so blessed. Sometimes we have so much experience. Sometimes we're so anointed or so favored that we forget that the kingdom is a kingdom of order. And there are certain things that we may not have been anointed to do. If I ask all of us in here how many of us sing, everybody should raise their hands. We all have the ability to sing. Now how many of us can sing well? <laughs> See, when you investigate further and ask more questions, you come to find out that there may be some things that you have not been gifted to do. We may sing from the pew, but being part of the worship team is another story. Because we may not have been gifted with a melodious voice, with a harmonious voice, to be able to lead the church in worship. It's the same thing with a preaching or teaching ministry. It may be, not everybody can be an usher or a deacon. Some, some saints are, are wonderful, they're saved, they're marvelous, but they're so serious. You sometimes, I've been there myself. I've had people wonder if, 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 if I had swallowed a, a, a bucket load of lemons. But beloved, to be able to usher people, then you need to have a smile. God bless Brother Lonray and the ushering team. They always receive people with that excellence and and those of you who serve with that smile, it's not easy to serve. You have to have a heart for it. And not everybody is people oriented. You know, that's why we have to know where our giftings are. So we can properly channel them in the order of the anointing and gifting that each of us has received. Because we are one body with many members. But we're not all gifted to do the same thing. So when we're out of position, and Uzziah, he crossed the line of the spiritual jurisdiction, and here comes the priesthood and said, son, now you, you're king in the palace, in the temple God is king. And he said in order that it is the sons of Levi, the sons of Aaron, are the ones who have been anointed and authorized to minister in the sanctuary. You are crossing the line. You're going past. And you know what Isaiah did? He became angry. Let's be careful, beloved, with pride. That will lead us to believe we're at a level that we're not. That will lead us to believe that we have jurisdiction to do what we have not been given authority to do. And then the Bible says, while he was raging at the priests in their presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temple. See, sometimes, sometimes if we're not careful, God can use people to correct us and put us in our place and remind us where we should be. But pride will lead us to oppose people while we're blind to the fact that we're really opposing God. Any husband in here has ever been corrected by your wife? <laughs> I always remember what God told Abraham in the book of Genesis, chapter 21. When Sarah told him, get Hagar out, 
get Ishmael out. They will not inherit with my son. And it says that Abraham, King James Version, Abraham became very grave. And casting out his son. And the Lord says, listen to the voice of your wife. And it sounds funny to us. But I'm putting the example because God can use anybody. He will sometimes, if he wants to humble us, use people that the person may believe are beneath them. Say, you're out of line. You don't qualify to tell me that. doesn't matter. The truth is the truth no matter who says it. Are you listening to me? The truth is the truth, even in the mouth of a liar. Whether it's L-I-A-R or L-A-W-Y-E-R. You'll get that when you get home. <laughs> Sounds the same a lot of times, right? <laughs> the priesthood told King Uzziah, you're out of bounds. But since Uzziah became mad, the Bible says leprosy broke out on his forehead. They rushed him out of the temple. They put him in a secluded room where he spent the rest of his days. And his son had to assume the throne. So we need to get in the right position in order for God's purpose to be birthed. As we close, in the birth process, two quick things. We bring it to an end. Number one, we need help. We need help. You need help. I need help. We need midwives. We need spiritual midwives in the church. We have anointed spiritual people used by God in the church with or without position, with or without titles. We need to help each other birth God's purpose. We need somebody to take our pulse. Amen, sisters that have been through the birthing process. Check your blood pressure. Make sure your sugar's okay. Make sure you're dilated. Make sure everything's in the right position. If there's a breech baby, they intervene and turn that thing around. If there's an emergency, they'll go ahead and make an emergency alarm for the doctor to come in. But we need somebody to help us, to monitor us, to supervise us, to care for us until we deliver the purposes of God. Yeah. Tell somebody, say, I need your help. You'd be surprised, beloved, at how many people refuse to acknowledge that they need help. Thank you, Reverend Thomas. You ever dealt with someone that it was 150% obvious that they could not do what they were attempting to do. And yet, you come by and say, uh, what, do you need some assistance? No. <laughs> Can I help you? No. I got this. I'll get it done. Don't worry. And yet it becomes not obvious more and more that they have no idea what it is they're doing. We need help. We need assistance. And the second thing is we need to push. And somebody used the acronym P-U-S-H as pray until something happens. Amen. There are cases where if it is not possible for natural birth, then 
a C-section, a cesarean section has to be done in order to have the child be birthed. Outside of that, there could be uh, instances where in order to, to help the woman in the moment of labor, an epidural shot may be needed. Any of your sisters have gotten that epidural? And according to, to information, it says that any movement, sporadic movement during that process of an epidural injection could end up causing paralysis. There's a lot of things that can be said, a lot of complicated processes. But at the end of it all, we have to be willing to endure some pain, whether it be natural birth in the, in the sister's case here. Whether it was natural birth or C-section, you went through a period of pain. But you can say, when you held that child in your arms, that boy or that girl, you forgot everything that happened before. The nausea, the swollen ankles, the stretching, sending your husband out uh, at a 12 o'clock at night to get a burger because you're hungry, whatever it is, or the complications, high blood pressure, situations that occur that were not expected, and then the pain of the birthing process once you had that child in your arms. The memories of the pain just went away because the joy, and Jesus talked about it, that a woman goes through sorrow, but once she has in her arms that child, the joy of the child is greater than the memory of the pain. Amen. Beloved, we as a church, we need to push forward. Experiences that might be painful are part of the process, but once we see God's purpose be birthed through us, we say thank you for the trials. Thank you for the long nights. Thank you for the dark stages. Thank you for the situations and the problems and the headaches because now I can see and touch the purpose of God. Birthing God's purposes is something that every believer should seek to have happen in their lives. It is intimacy with the Holy Spirit that leads us to conceive the Father's purpose in us. But then we must pay attention to our spiritual health and to the right development of that purpose in us. God is able to do miracles and intervene. But we must remember that it is not a license for us to be negligent or careless. Let us allow God to place in us what he wants to do in our lives. Let's be attentive to the process until his purpose is birthed. And we can hold it. We can see it. We can touch it. And give him thanks for what he has done in our lives. Father, in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Lord, help us. Help me. Help this wonderful church. Help its leadership. Help the transition committee. All of us, God. As never before, oh God, we need your help, your guidance, your protection. We want your purpose to be accomplished through us. We want your plan to unfold before us. We want to execute and accomplish in this realm what you have already decided in your realm. And so God bless each family. Bless each person. If there's any conditions in our spiritual health that need attending to, reveal it to us, Lord. Help us to see what we cannot see. Help us to understand what we cannot understand. Open the eyes of our understanding. Renew our hearts. Create in me, as David said, oh God, a new heart. A pure heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Return unto me the joy of salvation. And a noble spirit sustain me. Hallelujah. Work on us, Lord.
as the days go by, while we're on the job, when we're in our homes, as we meditate in your word, as we have fellowship with you in our personal time, minister, uh, minister to us through every avenue and help us to go forth in birthing your purposes. Bless your people. Hallelujah. We give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? Amen. Reverend Torres is going to come and close in just a moment, but I would like for you to raise your hands to the heavens. May is a beautiful month, beloved. And in seven more days, we're going to be honoring the precious women who God has used to bring us into this world and honoring all the mothers in the church. It's a reminder to us that God wants to use us to be his spiritual womb on earth for his purposes to be manifest through us. And I just want us to take a moment of surrender right where you are. Just take a couple of seconds. God wants each and every one of us to leave this place convinced convicted in our hearts about what he wants to do in our lives about his works about his purposes his plans and right where you are with your hands raised just take a couple seconds and just surrender to the process surrender to the Lord surrender to his will surrender to what he wants to do surrender to the path he wants you to walk in Surrender. If that means changes, accept changes. If that means going a different route than what you thought about, let the Lord do what he wants to do. Because it's ultimately his will that counts. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and thanks. And we surrender. We surrender. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart. I, I give you my soul. Let that be your ending prayer tonight. I live this morning. For Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my soul. Every breath I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment, every moment that I'm awake. Lord, have your way Lord, have in me. One more time, Lord, I give you. Lord, I give you my yes, Lord, heart. Yes, I give you our hearts. I give you my soul. Hallelujah. I live for you alone. Every, every breath, breath that, that I, I take, take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me again. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, go with us. Go with us this morning, Father, and be with us throughout the week. I pray, God, that we would take your word and apply to our heart and our, and our spirit and our body. And Lord, that it will be a blessing. And let us be a blessing. Let's look for a place for a time, for a divine appointment this week to be a blessing to someone. In the name of Jesus and all of God's people say, Amen. greet each other in the name